I, f- I find the demonization of sex work to be incredibly stupid. One way or another, all of us are prostituting some way. Whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, I don't care what you are. You are prostituting in one way or another for money. When you are complacent and you're comfortable and you're chilled, yeah. that is where your dreams die. And that's where you become stagnant. Welcome back to our chat room. I'm with my co-pilot, Ogu Le Kosi. How are you doing, honey? I'm good in you, babe. Very well, thank you. And today we're hanging out with Unoni, and I'm very excited to be having conversations with Unoni. And she's going to be joining us today in our chat room having chats. So I found a new reality show. It was, um, I saw it on Twitter. They were talking about it. So I was like, okay, I have to go t- check it out. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm watching um, Desperate, you know, Real Housewives of Joburg. <laughs> and then Nancy said Desperate Housewives. I'm like, nope. Real Housewives of yes. Joburg. And I found a very moment that doesn't understand it, guys, because you can't All right. Because it's, I think we're on season seven now. And I'm only starting watching from season seven. Have you watched it? No, I've never had the opportunity. I've watched a couple of episodes yeah. from previous seasons, but I think I watched more of Real Housewives of Durban, Durban. as opposed to Joburg. I enjoyed mm-hmm. the Gebecha Housewives. They were funny. They were, f- <laughs> like, they literally caught me cracking up. I loved Gebecha Housewives. I wish they could come back with season two. They have to. But, have to. yeah, well, season seven of Real Housewives of Joburg, there's this woman called Madam. Okay, wait, let me correct you, friend. Okay. Season season one. Yeah. But they're only on season three now. Oh, they're on season three. <laughs> is, is, is that bad? So uh, season one is where yeah. Madame Akona. Okay. And then about season two, that's where uh, uh, Uban Lo, Lo Shatena, that rich guy. Mrs. Mops. I go season two. I, Mrs. Mops. So I say I go season one. Say I go season but one. But you like I go... Um, Housewives of oh, Johannesburg. Okay. Yeah. Housewives of Johannesburg, Leonzo, Sonia, Correct. and what? Let's, yeah, season one. Carry season on. Season one. Yes. Madam. No, then I commit. No, mercy. Okay. I was seeing the relationship and how they're engaging with each other mm. and how Madam is involved in Umercy's relationships. Okay. And how Madam even knows Uguti Umercy. I'm a daughter actually now, animal. And I was like thinking to myself, go say, wait, is this normal? Mm-hmm. Is it normal for parents to know Uguti um the relationships is umtana zinjan? I feel like it was a bit too personal. They probably talk about his sex life. <laughs> Who talks about his sex life with Umedem? Like, where do we draw the line? Like, does parents and daughter or son have to have like boundaries? That's a very tricky one for me. Okay, because <laughs> I'm probably considered as a parent who shares too much. Um, I believe that as parents, we need to have boundaries to a certain degree when it comes to discussions about our children's lives and about our lives, our our romantic relationships. Okay. Even though I say that, it is also important that children know that they can have conversations with their parents about their relationships. What I have experienced previously is that because we, I personally, have kept things private or away from from my parents or from from people who could guide me better because they are older than me, I ended up making rookie mistakes within relationships. And an example would be, I remember when I got married in my 20s, in immediately the people around me when the older people my grandmother my grand my 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 mom my aunts and so on the first thing they said is that this is the worst decision you could ever make for yourself damn and i did not listen to that and i went ahead and for 13 years i was in that relationship and i kept things away from them because there was no avenue for me to say to them this is actually what's happening within my relationship. Because had I had that avenue, you would have been able to mm, go back and talk, and, ask, you know, engage. and I would have probably left sooner. Okay. Mm. But I stayed because I didn't have an avenue. Okay. So I think it is important for children to, to know that they can go and speak to their parents about their relationships. Mm. What I do find problematic is that, um, especially mothers, they start wanting their daughters or sons to have the types of relationships they wanted mm. to have. 
Mm. Now we are becoming mm. so emotional incest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Emotional incest. Now it's becoming emotional incest when a parent relies on the child for their emotional needs. Yes. And in the black yes. culture, we also rely on the child for their financial needs. Yes. Now, mm. our daughter, our firstborn daughter who's working, I'm like the new season, you'll catch up with it. Uli, Uli Joy is crying about now. She's saying it's black tax. But it's actually me. I was like, mm, that's like a sense of you are now the husband to your mother. Exactly. Hey. And single mothers do that a lot. They do and that. as a single mom, I can attest to that because mm. it was something that I had to consciously decide not to do. Single mothers make their their children, yeah. especially their sons, uh, yes. their husbands. Their husbands. And and, and they, they're like, you are the king of my castle. Mm. We undo, we undo Indo da 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 and you're like, no, mm. no. That your child is not going to be the decision maker in your home. Yes. Your child is, it, it's not their responsibility which about taking it grosser and make sure that you're, you're taken care of and their siblings are taken care of. And black moms, specifically single black moms, do that a lot. A lot. To their children, yeah. to their boy children and to their girl children. Mm. And then with their with the girlfriends yes. and the wives. About my God, yeah. Yes, I wanted because, to get into that one. Because why are you going to know? Because obviously, Lomuntulo Atandana na umtuanako is now taking Mm-mm. the space that you wanted to, to occupy, yes. which is emotional incest, it is. guys. It becomes a burden to the child. It is. Where do we then draw the line? <gasps> Jola. <laughs> as a mother, Jola, guys. Yes. As a mother, Jola, find your own interests. Do the things that you want to do with your own life. Like, why are you sitting there concerned? Why sitting there concerned? Why are you sitting there concerned? Mina, my mom, my husband, which is my dad, but I'm just, that's how I'm going to speak. I met my husband, as in after 40 something years of them being married. I told her, <laughs> after two years, when you've healed, told him cool. Yes. But we're yes. and, we're so and we only have like one brother. Yes. And we're so mm. Mm. And so mm. very content. If you're going to do the single route, Oh, as exactly. If you're gonna remain single, yeah, as a, as a mom, as a widow, as, as a whatever, whatever. Yes. I will have interests as Zako. <laughs> Find things, you know. I'm I'm an abanya bo girl. Well, no yens or whatever it is. Go, I don't know. Go clubbing. Go True. hiking. Go, whatever. She went that route. The whole oh, I'm gonna meet up with my prayer yes. buddies. I'm gonna yes. like, yeah, well, yeah, that person. Hambani, hambani. Who's gonna be with you? Who's busy than me? I'm like, oh yes. no, good. And that's good because then I can still be in a healthy relationship. Yes. My brother can focus on his own family mm. because in King Ayat with our black brothers, it's good man, they are torn. That's why I have depression. Yes. A whole lot of them are, are so overwhelmed because mm. I must look after mom. Mm. And also when it's really, really toxic, also sister and her kids. Huh. Huh. So emotional incest is a real thing. It's a Yo. real thing. It's Yo. a real thing. It, it, I watch it all the time because of my age group and because a lot of of women in my age group are single moms damn and 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 you watch and you go girl girl i think it's also because we've seen it play out so many times to a point where we don't even realize mm. Mm. that is emotional incest it we is. have normalized it and yes. we need to stop it be, before it becomes a culture so it's gonna see it's culture, become a culture it, it has become right it has become a culture and we need that you see that's we why we unlearn. need to stop we need to unlearn that and say no the child is a child in my household mm. you're not the man of the house does not make you now the man of the house actually i fought to the woman when i know um that came while really you know during that week before singing up and then she's like now your brother is the man of the house my, me and my sister are like me and you we are out, actually all three of us we are outspoken we were like oh hell no see no. but as our brother can be our father as long as school fees i get them dance guy and yeah. then focus on your wife. And he was newly married, right? Focus on your wife. Mm. It's a And okay. then so if I'm going to control me, no good meaning we are time. Dude, can't focus on cause it's really unfair because then you're actually setting up the person for failure. For failure. Because there's two the shoes are too big to fill. They're 
and How? he needs to discover it himself. My dad understood me. I'm sure our parents understand us the way we are. But mm. your sibling does not have the grace to understand you as mm. I always fight with my siblings. Grace. Any, any older sibling, you say, dude, om zalang um mm. Yes, if you're way older, um zuela, but om zalang. So when they go off real, gululu gutu when um let's cut her out. Gululu gutu, u sibling a chelo mama, just like husband, pela u brother. Gutu cut her out, cut her out. But my dad would never cut me out. Mm. No matter grace. how how bad I go. Beautiful. My dad will never say Puma la wam wang wang zala pel. So don't as a brother yagalan don't go put zanza ubabe. How does it look like financially though? Yo. When it's when it's a burden to the child financially, when the parent is burdening the child financially. Hmm. I have realized that a lot of parents have created um that have made their children their backup plan. Mm. Yo. And I know that to be true. It was true for me for a long time in my own family where I was the backup plan for them in terms of finances. And I had to learn a, in a very hard way when you lose everything and you realize, Uguti, people can actually look after themselves. Okay. <gasps> because I would, I would put myself in such situations whereby I am taking out loans, I have multiple credit cards, I am taking out I'm overdraft facilities, just to make sure that my mom and my siblings are okay until I dug myself into such a state financially where I had to lose everything in order for me to start afresh. And during the period when I had lost everything, it was very shocking to realize that everybody is fine. Oh, they are fine. Wow. Whether I give them money or not. Right. Mm. So when I started recovering, I realized, Guti, no, 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 no. I was actually giving people money, my family money, my friends money and so on, because I was trying to fill a void mm. within myself. I was feeling insufficient. I was feeling like I'm, I'm not enough because I am not giving money. Mm. Oh, okay. It was a me problem. Mm. And now when they phone and they say, no, sitting, I'm able to say, I budget, yeah does not stretch that far. I only have this amount for myself. Because, and another thing is that we, what we don't realize is that if you don't look after yourself financially, you are a burden oh, yes. to your children. Oh, okay. okay. You, you are a problem mm. to your children. And because I don't want my children to be my financial security, I needed to do something about that. Wow. My mom had to learn good. I am not of financial security. Beautiful. And for a long time, I was. Yeah. And then Nuntlandla would go and do it. And then Nuntlandla would run and do it. And now I'm able to say, Ankhon. Good. Kanjan, wait, because Gumnandi would say this now, you're no longer doing it. But it's not easy. No, it's not. I was cut off for a long time. Oh. I was, I was, I was rejected for a long time because people would be like, "Yeah, God, in 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 fact, I was told straight to my face, Therefore, you owe me. and and then you had to, you have to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm not the bank. You are not depositing money into me. It's not an investment no. that is that mm. matures no. when I start working. No. Mm. Mm. And it's tough. Mm. Mm. Sometimes you have to accept good. You are gonna be an outcast. And it's okay to be an outcast. That's good. I you like didn't, to be the you didn't shit mind the how family. uncomfortable it felt when they cut you out. Because remember, the reason why we, then we become people pleasers is because I hate the discomfort that comes with good mama Arasaibambi if on Koliam. Babes, who has ever evolved and grown in life? Mm. Without discomfort. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Discomfort, discomfort gives you the opportunity to expand okay. and to grow. Wherever you find Kuti, there's a, a discomfort, there's a void that you personally need to fill. Hmm. You need to develop something inside of you that is going to help you occupy that space. Everything that requires growth in anything requires, requires hmm. discomfort. Um, when you are complacent and you're comfortable and you're chilled, yeah. that is where your dreams die. And that's where you become stagnant. That's good. Discomfort is important. That's good. To lose weight, there yeah. must be discomfort. discomfort. To gain weight and muscle and whatever, there must be discomfort. In order for you to become a better whatever, you need to go through the process of discomfort hmm. and, until you feel 
that space. Everything Good. that in, it, uh, encompasses growth mm. requires discomfort. When yeah. you're comfortable, you stagnate and you die. Everything that is stagnant dies. Do you think parents lose their method? of being of parenting because they are depending on the kids financially. Yes. They put up with bullshit because hey we are facing Wendy. Yes. They do. Oh, and and another thing I've also picked up is that as soon as a parent you become dependent on your on your child emotionally or in, in other ways you also lose the ability to exercise mm. that ability within yourself okay. because you are not flexing that muscle. Okay. Okay. You're not flexing the muscle of Okay. So now you become a dependent. And when you are a dependent, we are control. Damn. So it's changes and number roles. So parents to child, now the child is the parents. Yes. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, and it, it shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't so be boundaries happening. are really important. They're, they're vital. Yo, 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 yo. Whew, on a lighter <laughs> note, <laughs> hey, I'm getting hey. lectured today. <laughs> So the show, the, another show that I really, really hate, <laughs> like I really hate that show. This body works for me. And <laughs> why do you hate that show? Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a trash show. It's it's a trash show. They made a deliberate effort to dehumanize girls who have made a decision of on how they want to live their lives. They did not make them look good. They like Benzing and Mabom, everything. They forced them into spaces that they were uncomfortable in to push a certain narrative and an agenda. But I love that you're in the reality show space. Unoni is the producer of Sports Wives. Okay. Yes. She produced a lot of shows, actually. Even in, oh, now I forgot the name. Which one are you shooting now? I, Abandoned. Abandoned. Mm -hmm. On season three. On season three. Yeah. Because you're in the reality show space, I oh. want to know from you, Noni, why, why, what is it about the, the crew and trying for the reality show to be toxic? Is that what sells? First and foremost, can we all just make peace with the fact that that um, reality as a genre is going nowhere on the continent because it's new to us. So please make peace with it right now. Okay? Reality TV has been big in the United States and Europe and so on for many, many years. And we had not found a niche um, on the continent on, on how to do reality. They have now found it. Um, Young, Famous and African, when I worked on that season as well, um, when they first came, that the first season came, it was the first time that the world realized how much content actually exists on the on the African continent. Okay. All right? It's not going anywhere. So if you can call it trash TV, you can call it whatever you want, as a genre, it's growing. Mm. Okay. It's only going to get, so 10 years. Yeah. For the next 10, just make... We're Nazi getting started. Yeah. Nasitia, or relax, say, yeah. I now. In fact, it's, it's going to become more and more localized. Okay, okay. That's what's going to happen. All right? Secondly, what you call trash TV in mm. terms of reality mm. has viewers on chokehold. The only way anything succeeds is if you give it attention. Mm -hmm. When you watch something, you get ARs. ARs tell the broadcaster that the audience is interested in this type of content. What are ARs? There are viewer ratings. Oh, okay. So when people are sitting and they have clicked on the channel, yes. there are certain systems that I use to say this number of people at this point in time are watching this. Okay. In the YouTube space, it would be our views. It your would be view the subscribers. Exactly. Those okay. are your ARs. Okay. Right. Not the subscribers, the views. The views. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, so on YouTube, you've got subscribers mm -hmm. on, on Bro with broadcasters, you have people who subscribe. They pay for DSTV, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay yeah. for it. You're a subscriber. And True. then you watch that show. True. So they're able to say this number of people are watching this and so on. Shows as Nengon. Yes. They don't get views. They don't get very, they don't get very many views. And everybody's saying, oh, you guys are putting out a narrative. And we're like, no, we are not putting out a narrative. Audiences. Yes. They are, are the ones that drive us. Yes, 
they are responding to certain narratives. We don't choose these narratives. Yeah. Please understand. So what's wrong with us as a society? We like watching trash? As a society, it appears as if people love feeling better about themselves and their own situations by watching people going through shit. Going through shit. Which is why emotainment is big, which is why reality is big. Emotainment is abo kumbule kaya, abo abandoned nanan. Because mm. abantu enjoy, and I don't know if they are aware, they enjoy to sit in their homes and go, oh, look at that arma skepsel. Damn. Mm. Oh, look at that girl. She is on a pole dancing and bam telling a wine in a nan. Yeah. I am such a better person. Mm. So people enjoy watching content that makes them feel like they are better are people better. and are in a better position. And that's what reality TV is. That's how I in, feel in, about authentic um, yes. content. Ladies, Kulmanga, we're yeah. now watching people in the shack and we're calling that authentic. Yes. But carry on, yes. But it is authentic because is it's, it? it's their reality. Reality, true. That's what they're in. <clears throat> so channels will continue. Mm -hmm. um, commissioning um, content that is viewed the most. And so then... <laughs> Why is it that, yes, channel subscribes to it? Is it within the production crew who will say, yeah, you fight with that one. And then you go against that one. You must backstab that one because that's good content. I don't know what other people are doing on their shows. I can only speak about myself. I know that what we, what we did is that we just cast people and because... We we speak to you. We understand you. We do a we psychoanalyze you, and you are away. Okay, right. I see Yenzi. That's the interview. In, in, yeah. Okay. And we do everything, and then we do the same with you, and we and we go right. So these people, based on their personality types, the probability is they would get along. Mm. <laughs> okay. This is the probability. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we put the both of you in a situation and then we get another person who we've also interviewed and blah 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 and then we go the probability is based on her personality yeah. type uh -uh. when it comes to the color orange yo mm. so right. she's a orange and then start the orange so big as azani sinchelo <laughs> and it's a big orange because when you turn the orange yo you like it that person doesn't. But now we're going, here's a situation, there's orange. And you're going, oh my God, I love orange. It's so amazing. And the other person's like, I actually hate that bitch because she likes orange. Because orange actually triggers me. We did not plant that Uguti Nizokaban Uben situation. But how then do you protect situation, I love Imagine. How you put it. it is though. It is. It's a situation which is which is placed. You put it there. It just we were just like us. no, because oh, when you cause a girl to say now, if we a dinner in no orange, na 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 na, and we're like great, but I'm sure it's a show with other personalities. Well, how then do you protect the cast members from the situations that you've placed the color orange and they might just go against each other and hurt each other? Because I've seen a reality show with bottles being thrown around trying to hurt the other person. How does the cast protect the, the crew? Well, the crew the protects crew. the cast. Once again, I cannot speak on other people's shows. Yes. <laughs> because Angas, you yeah. know. Um, what what we have done is basically made sure that we get ladies on board who are not gonna go to that extent. And I know that it is a trend. Mm. And it appears to be instigated, you know. Like, mm, that's mm. like Baba Lamula seba on top of each other, but more Baba Nguti, they are going. Bye bye. Audiences also like that, guys. Oh yeah, we God. do. I, I, you guys I love, love that. it. I loved watching OND you... hit that that girl, whatever her name is. Gina. Gina, yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yes, guys girl. love it. 
<laughs> you guys love it. So, so you, you can't turn around and look at media and go, oh, but the media is doing this. No, guys, you love it. Audiences lap it up. Numbers don't lie. No, they don't. I have a question. Um, with either's body works, I think finally, try, try to find your words. Um, I have a question for you, right? Um, if this body works for me, in job I to humanize, I'll like even demonize Ben Zangati in AMB to be a sex worker. And but this show, it's all about sex workers a and a as broad as it is, like from dancing to to whatever to whatever. So now why put it as if it's a bad idea? Why are you saying good if these girls are broken, these girls need to find their fathers, these girls need to fix something? Um, yet, but these girls are here Well, you are, are, are having work because of my lifestyle. So why are you acting as if my lifestyle is bad, but it's it's feeding both of us? You've got you a show now You've got a show of now my because lifestyle. of my lifestyle. Yeah, hey, hey. Can't they then rather but only another experienced person within the sex industry also by Jerry educate the people about this? Instead of acting as if these girls are not educated now, when you when you watch on 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 TikTok, people reviewing them, they'd be like, "Oh, guys, education is so important. Education." I'm like, my friend is a sex worker and she's educated. Like, so why are you guys pushing one narrative yet that's not the truth? So you you used a very interesting word. You used the word education. The vast majority of audiences don't give a flying fuck about being educated. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we they want to be entertained. Audiences want to be entertained. Yeah. Okay, they do not care about being given life skills that could further you and um, give you a different perspective, and so on and so on. Um, audiences don't want to be educated. Audiences don't want to be inspired. And audiences don't want to be um, guided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, into a, a different state of being. Okay. The, the vast majority of audiences want to be entertained. And you're and definitely saying this because you have the numbers. Guys, there's an entire channel. Yeah. That constantly shows what you call trash TV. Yeah. It has the highest yeah, it does. viewership. It does, you're right. Other channels are competing against the said channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, the camera work is bad. The yes. editing yeah. is yes. bad. The audio is bad. But yes. guys, but shoot a normal go hoop. Well. Audiences will sit down and watch Riyadh Sotel. Gibas guys. They will watch and you're going, how are you watching this? Yeah. Mm. How are you watching this trash? They love it. And 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 I find it fascinating because people are like, no, you guys must be making content that's gonna educate us. I'm like, you don't want to watch. But 5%, no. Guys, uh, 5%. You, then go to the national broadcaster. That's why you have a national broadcaster. The South African Broadcasting Corporation. Yes. Its mandate is to educate and to do all. Then go to the national broadcaster and leave us alone. And the <laughs> national broadcaster is struggling. You know why? Uh -huh. Because, again, educating and what, what, what. People are not watching. But no. I, I can know. No, no, wait. He, he, hear me out. If 5% means I am within if this body works for me, right? And while I'm there, I'm like, oh, girl, please help me to be more comfortable in my sexuality. Like when you said to dance. And then, please, and then, Angas, there's a way in 22 I would. Minutes. In that's what I'm saying. Within the 22, like just five minutes. Five nine, minutes is a long time. It will have to be Doc Berry where we can, she can understand what I'm saying. Five minutes is a long time, babe. Is it? Your attention span. Five minutes is a very, very long time. There is no way we're going to sit there and educate audiences for five minutes. Once again, if you want to be educated, go to the national broadcaster. But I actually Their love what you're saying. is to. Yeah. To, to gisa and to educate yeah. and to enlighten what, what, what. guys this is entertainment okay right? we're entertaining it, it takes away the responsibility from a content creator who's yeah what are you teaching young kids no i'm not here to teach your kids yeah go to a place if you want to be taught mm. go to a place if you want to be inspired i'm here to entertain mm. i like it when you say it like that though. it's the truth <laughs> And it makes you feel some type of way, but numbers don't lie. How do you go about to find the, the cost? 
Mm. With, with sports wives, how did you go about to say, I'm going to find the cost? On sports wives, I think I spent a good three months contacting different women who were married to and dating sports people. And I have had numerous meetings and lunches and, and had to fly out. It, like, but we, it was a real mission. And um, very few women wanted to be a part of the show because um, of what reality shows are known to be and the narrative that is pushed. Um, and I explained that for, for me, for us as a, as a production company, Sportswise was also supposed to assist women who were in relationships and married to these sports people to establish themselves. Oh, lovely. That is how I, that, that was the, the approach I took. I didn't say you are coming onto a show to be famous and to be ratchet and whatever. And I was like, when you come on the show, please be sure to have a goal mm. for you. Okay. And when, and when you've established this goal, am I wanting to start a business? Am I wanting to push a business? Am I wanting to, shoot, to push a brand? Whatever the hell you're doing. While you're on the show, while you're on air, you start pushing your brand because now you have a reference. You can go, Go to Showmax. I am on the screen. These are the numbers. These are, this is what's happening on Twitter. I, my name is trending on Twitter and so on. Then you can build a business. Sisanda Ojiwe has, done, has, has used the platform, has used Sports Wives in, in the most brilliant way because she always, she always wanted to DJ and she was DJing Gangane Lapana Lapa. And it wasn't taking off. As soon as she got onto Sports Wives, and as much as audiences are like, we don't like Sisanda Ing Ing, the fact is, every week, without fail, on Twitter, her name is there. Is there. She's my it's, favorite. It's trendy. I love her. And all she did was take that opportunity, um, that opportunity and now she's headlining mm -hmm. events as a DJ. Something that would have taken for longer for her to do mm. had she not been on the show. So as much as audience is like, oh, we hate Susanna Ng Ng, I'm like, guys, you're giving her attention. And that's all ah. she needs. <laughs> that's all she needs. We, we just need the attention. And she got the attention. And now her, her brand is taking off as a DJ. Dipo is also doing very well as Yami Mami because now other opportunities are opening up mm. for her because she's on Sports Wives. So those two ladies are definitely using the opportunity of being on a reality show in a method that I had said to them, this is how you can use it. Mm. Those were the ladies who said yes. The ones that, uh, well, we had to let go of a couple, but those are the ladies who said yes. When they to... decline, what are, why are they declining to be on the show? Because um, um, some were like, uh, we are very private people. Okay. Um, guys, scandals are going to come out. Yeah. When yeah. you're on a, re a reality show, Twitter is going to go and dig up scandals. And a lot of women who are married to sports people do not want things of the past rehashed mm. because... Not everybody is cognizant of scandals that happen in the sporting world. Okay. They are very carefully wrapped up and hidden, especially in sports such as rugby, cricket, and so on. Which, and we <laughs> approach those women. And, you know, soccer, not so much hidden. Yeah, not but, so much but hidden. But about rugby, about cricket, about, mm, ah, about horse so. racing, because there were, there were ladies about horse racing that we had found and so on. Unama scandal okay. that not everybody hears about. And it's just soccer where it's easy. So they, the, the women, which is crazy, the women did not want to jeopardize their husbands you. or boyfriends' um, careers by appearing on the show mm. because those things will come to light. Oh, mm. but that's that's a good mm. reason to decline. It's a career move because after the show is gone, you've got a life to live. Mm. That, that's a good reason, the man I believe. Just leave you as well. Ooh, <laughs> so you've put your life on hold. Yeah, yeah. For a man. So those are the risks that exist when you take an opportunity to go into a reality show. But those are also the risks that exist when you decide to date or marry into the sporting community. Ooh. And um Clarissa's storyline is specifically that because oh, she shame, is man. a brilliant, beautiful, mm. amazing human being 
who put her entire life on hold just on to take care of the man's career to, to support her man's career oh. and in the end the man is living his best life and she has to start a life do you think it would work for her to take um black woman's advice to say hi queen is amba nelishi sayo hlala lapho ohambile kodwa ukayi yo so ugayi ohambile yeah ugayi ohambile yeah because i never understood her when story when is this coming out <laughs> <laughs> Month end or something, because uh, it's only. I mean, I mean that episode of Gutu Kayo Hamil is only coming out episode six, so we're episode five on Tuesday. Oh, yo, goddamn! I thought she's yeah. leaving. Yeah. He, he's he 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 sold the house while she was in it with the kids. Mm. Um, mm. And he fucked off. But and also, how do reality shows know? Uguti drama is about to happen in your life, and you. Queen Kiwinki starts shooting when the drama is about to be happening. Bad I mean, Lord. like good Real Housewives of Joburg, whom <laughs> shot. Oh, we are there with the cameras. How we interview you? Oh, so, uh, like I said right at the beginning, we we speak to you. We when is your birthday coming up? When is this? Oh. So we plan our entire um, season. Sh- 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 yeah, w- our schedule mm. is planned around. This person is doing this. This person is doing this. This person is doing this. What have you always wanted to do? I've always wanted to go skiing. Okay, how do we make that into um, content that can be filmed? Because you've always wanted to go skiing. Oh, you know, um, and you can go skiing with five of the ladies or three of the ladies and so on. And no, it's not their money. <laughs> I wanted to say, why I'm a party, yeah, host, yeah, come to my house. Some of them, it's not even their houses. Um, it, once again, I cannot speak about other people's mm-hmm. shows, but I know that on Sports Wives, we shot people. No, you did at their own homes. You did. We. If we tell her, so we to a big room. I'm a Pakistani. Nothing is seeing. That was reality. That yeah. was dope. So we 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 made a very conscious. Um, decision that la potla la kon ila po sok shoot hagan. Lovely. La potla la kon isi Lovely. Ila po otla la kon isi ngwa. Ayenge sik tate sik fage e Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Asu mundu oya e Louis Vuitton. God wa generally, generally guys. I'm angry. I'm just saying as kat listening umundu bagati I'm going on a on a ski trip in in a production here yeah. at Kokela. That's what I thought trip. also. Um, yeah. yeah. Abo, um, we're doing a boat cruise with Katniss Ning. Hi, all the time. A production here at Kokela. Um, those things. And that's what... I, I, I mean, to make it look ra- rich. To make the aesthetics look good. Yeah, but it's not, even, it's not even that, babe. It's, it's to... Reality shows also have an aspirational aspect to them. Aspirational. Fire. Oh. Do you understand? Mm. So we are going to also foster mm. situations. So we're not putting you in it. We're just, we are fostering a situation for aspirational things. Because people don't only want to see down and out things. People also want to be inspired. Hallelujah. Oh my God, there is a boat cruise that I can go to with my girls exactly. and so on. And, and we go black child is possible. Okay, that's yes. also beautiful though. You know, it's you can yes. you can go on a, a, a ski trip and and so on. Cuz now you've seen it. You didn't even know previously Uguti. Mm. You can do you that. You can do this and now you're like but they did it at that, on that reality show. But I wouldn't want if I do a reality show, I wouldn't want to do it in my own house cuz the crew they come in in your own space like it is really then in yes, it is invasive. I mean, like how Look, we 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 shrink and mm. expand depending on where we are. I mean, maximum it would be like twenty five people. You yeah. um, <laughs> damn. <laughs> but but going back to my mother's house, there's <laughs> <laughs> more space. <laughs> but um, if Sabonu Guti, you are in a space where. 25 people are not going mm. so you're not going to have all five of your cameras and, and, and you'll take two cameras, one sound. Mm. Um, you know, you'll shrink your, your, especially when you shoot in complexes. Complexes don't want the whole circus mm. there. Have you ever had a situation where 
um, you cast someone and then they're there and then you realize because this person is not being real enough. They're not giving us content, content. and you decast them. No, I've never had that situation, but we did have a situation where one of our cast members had her own understanding of what she thinks is going to happen. Um, and and she had an aspiration to establish a nail um, a nail salon kind of situation. Okay. And we, at that point in our, in our schedule, we hadn't figured out how we were going to incorporate okay. um, the nail business and, and showing off her skill and so on. And she felt that we were only focusing on certain elements of her life, which are very real um, storylines that resonate with a lot of people. So, so we were like, this storyline resonates more with people and we, we think we should explore this storyline further. And she unfortunately felt that we were not um, supporting her aspiration to be a nail tech. Mm -hmm. um, and she decasted herself. We didn't no. decast her. Um, and of course, she's all over Twitter talking about it. And, and exp I'm just like, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's sad. Uh -huh. it's, it's, that is sad. It's unfortunate um, because her storyline, I feel, was, was the most real in terms of navigating same gender marriages and how families relate to that and so on. I felt her storyline was was really inspirational because so many people could relate to it um, when your relationship with your parent has broken down because of mm. who you choose to marry and okay. so on. I really felt that it was important for us to see it through. She did not see it that way. She she just felt that um, it was more important for her to to have nails. Mm. Okay, we got pushy business. Pushy business. Which could easily have come in. Gun and you wanted Rajan. content. And she was pushing oh. business. Yeah. And it just wasn't coming together. No, no, so, no, no. So. no. I, I, I get you. Like, I feel okay, Naibera short sighted. Yeah. Okay. Because, Mina, as I always say, see Mina any moment, I would always say, good, I'm a musician, I'm a vocalist. Mm. You know what I mean? So, any opportunity, whether you guys want to showcase my life, somehow in the, you know, so there is a smarter way of um Sisanda, let me do your nails. Oh right. And then whilst you shoot us to and get drama, but I'm doing your nails. What am I doing? I'm showcasing you yeah. my business. Okay. So make me a bit that smart. We were gonna get there. We were yeah. we, we were gonna get there. Um but that's not how she she saw it. So but she then, decast herself. The, do you allow uh, uh, um, the cast members to be flexible as to how they want to show themselves? Because it seems like you want this narrative. I I believe as the director, this is what's gonna sell. Yours is not. How flexible do you allow them to show? Like if I'm casted and then you want to see my father, and I'm like, no, wangfungo baba. Okay. So once again, we spoke to you. Asik Sure. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you say one of the things that I want to explore is a, the relationship with my father, you said that. Yo. I didn't say that. And then we have to figure out how to flesh out that storyline and how to make it into a thing. I never get out of the blueness of the sky city. <laughs> mm, you, I told you, you told us I gave this. you something. So the good, you, so the, Cast members are then deliberately spicy in order to trend or whatever. Yo, Nina, you know, oh, just... Abanya, maybe lack of, lack of knowledge. Mm. Where they're, they're thinking, I should know, you see, good, it's so easy. So then, can you know, you're taking notes. Yes. <laughs> you, no, we are. Right, yes. No, we are. So what I'm and opening my fuba, oh, no, he is listening. Hey, oh, good, remember you said this. Yes, and we, <laughs> and we do say that. We do say that. We, we go... <laughs> so previously when I spoke to you, you yes, said... Yes, you said... Because previously when I would when do I that, to I, you, I need to work with you. I need to work out of the team. Because I would do that. Like, you remember you said this. Yes, 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 But you did say that. You though. did say that. I'm so good. If, if somebody decasts themselves, do you pay them for decasting or um your parts of the show, Ia Puma, and then we don't pay you? So we paid everybody, even though... um. 
one person had already did cast. We paid everyone. We honored our contractual obligation. Um, even though she had decasted herself on the show, it doesn't look like okay. She decast herself as it was. It was. It was very. It was much sooner. She, she left the show much sooner than what it appears like on the show. Oh, wow. because we shoot scenes. So by the time she was gone, we you had mixed up we, the scenes. We had enough s- scenes to kind of like carry it. Wow, longer than. I mean, we would have loved more stuff um, with her, which once again is meaningful and deep and enduring because and relatable because that storyline is incredibly relatable. Um, but I mean, she pulled herself out, so we had to go. Okay, how are we reworking um, our episodes because? She can't disappear on episode five because she yeah. left at episode five. I was watching Imek G, um, the podcast, and then they had on the uh, on the um, interview the crew members of some South African reality shows. And okay. one of the reality stars that they had was, oh, good, this body works for me, mommy club, mm, okay. as well as Desperate Housewives. And then the common um, thing that they were saying, the, mm. the cast members, they were saying, oh, good, see, the production, mm. it's as if they play against them because they will say a sentence, Uguti, oh, Tando, you look so beautiful today, but last night you didn't look so great. Mm. They will cut out there, you look so beautiful today, and then <laughs> leave there, last night you didn't look so great. And then they put in the sound effects, Ta-dum! and then there's drama. <laughs> do you guys do that deliberately? It's called editing. <laughs> And then do they get to watch the show and then they get to have a say to say, no, you edited that incorrectly. No. No. It's not, not their money. It's not their money. No. <laughs> like we, it- we are commissioned by, we are given money by a broadcaster and they say, go and shoot. The broadcaster will tell us how to cut. You. Not you. So we edit the show and we give it to the broadcaster and the broadcaster says, yes, or no, we need more of whatever. Oh. Mm. You as the director, you are on the scene, you see the drama happening, and then you also sit down with the editor and say, this is the part I want you to show the most. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nanzo, okay? Nazo? I found our culture. Nazo? I found our culture. Yes. Ah. But, I re- but I know the brief from Channel. Okay. Because I they want to see. Yes. Channel knows what people respond to, guys. Mm, they do. They know. And the numbers don't lie. Again, numbers don't lie. I'm going to say this. Where attention goes, mm. things grow. If audiences say, we think that reality shows are, are detrimental to women and they are affecting, don't watch them. Okay. Do not watch something you don't want to see more of. Mm. The more you watch something, even if you are watching it, the point is you are giving it attention. Mm-hmm. True. You are paying, your currency is the is attention. The attention. Mm. You that's why they say you are paying attention because no, literally. attention is currency. You're making money because advertisers go and advertise on that slot because you are giving them your attention. Damn. Mm. So, so you are paying. How mm. does channel allow porn? Like adulting, that is porn. I feel like adulting should be on Pornhub. I've always wanted to ask you how you feel about that, eh? And they should be on Pornhub. Like feature but adulting. <laughs> but isn't adulting on, on Showmax? It's on Showmax. How do they allow porn? But it's I Showmax. It's not, it's not it's not it's not the normal platform. It's Showmax. What, what does, does that, that mean? Mm. It's a subscription thing. Oh, okay. so they allow nudity. Well, you've seen it, right? <laughs> I've I've heard that um, Netflix is gonna have a, a porn section. Is that is that something that could happen? I have no idea. Oh my god, I'd love to have my of own course you would porn love to have your own porn Netflix, channel on Netflix, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you've been shooting. You've been on on the TV game for years. Yeah, mm. I remember the other time you told me a story. Um, you were shooting. I think it was a vendor. 
And um, that's how you got the bracelets that are on your hands. Please tell us the story. I love it so much. <laughs> why, why are you wanting to hear my story? Because I think it's so beautiful. We were shooting a vendor and there was an old blind lady who was making these bracelets. We were shooting across from her and I'm always the loudest on set because I shout and blah, blah, blah. And she sent a little boy to, to say like, and I was shooting and I was like, what happened? Anyway, uh, and I was shooting and, and, and I was like, no, zoza, zoza. and then eventually I went and she sat me down and was fagagmin. And only recently did I discover or learn the significance of that. Um, I was told by Omakazi, Florence. <laughs> She's the one who, who because ex- I didn't fully understand and grasp um, what was what is the meaning so um <laughs> like like i've got in this p word that like literally i need to carry and um i was also told with women who wear a lot of these things are not supposed to be poor bitches <laughs> yes <laughs> because i going with with all these things but for me it was the whole thing would is see poor um, okay. Ina, so that I, I must carry and I must carry out. And the fact that she was blind on the other side of mm. the village, heard your voice and called you through, yeah. I think that is just so beautiful. Yeah. And it apparently is. when she was putting them on, like she was praying. Yeah. Wow. One by one. My father. Do you think Uti, um, the braces right now have made changes in your life in terms of maybe or whatever the case be? I think that the bracelets are a constant reminder. That's good. Um, even when things are really, really down and out, you remember which is somebody out there had so much faith in me um, that, that they took their faith and they put it into a physical thing. As a constant reminder, I don't believe that there are things that make your life better or um, make you like he and so on at all. I believe we hold all of that inside of us and we have the capacity to tap into it. But sometimes we need reminders such as necklaces and beads and whatever because those just sit there as a, as a reminder. Yeah, that's good. And so on, which also goes for my tattoos, which also goes for my piercings. Um, it's not just a random thing it's it's true it's is i i do things like that as a reminder to say yo um unga's call because we forget ourselves mm-hmm. cuz life sh- throws us curveballs and we see a lot of things that derail us and and we want to give up and we want to well personally i i go into like dark places where i don't want to live and it gets that that dark and but, but, but I'll have small reminders. I'll have a tattoo and I'm going to call. Mm. You know, the dragonfly starts its life like this, but then it glides over water. Mm. You know, and then you're sitting there, you're like, oh, woe is me. You're like, I'm going to call it. The phoenix mm. um, rises from the ashes, you know. So for me, it's it's reminders. Even my clit ring is a reminder. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Joe, how about you are behind um, <laughs> the camera? Would you ever be in front of it and we do a reality show? I would, I would never do a reality show about my life. Okay. Um, but I, I, I started yeah. Haiti with Noni years ago. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to start shooting that again. On, it was on Soweto TV. It was so beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we put it up on YouTube as well. Mm. So I think I'm going to do that again because I do... I do like speaking to people. I'm curious about people, which is why I do what I do, because I'm curious about people's lives. I'm curious about the psychology mm. of, of why people do what they do. I, I think that's what keeps me in this industry. Because <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> try to help. Oh, um, yes, so far far about, going about, I, I, I want to know why. And then I want to know, do you want to change or do you want to stay there? And then if you're going to stay there, then you need to start seeing what, what you're doing is okay. Okay. You need to be okay with what you're doing. Because I need to say, oh, you're but I really want to stop. I, 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 stop a line. Okay. I find, mm, I find the demonization of sex work to be incredibly 
stupid because we live in a capitalistic society mm -hmm. and the way that capitalism works is that we exploit natural resources mm -hmm. for profit to make money your body is a natural god-given resource and how you decide to exploit your body in order to make money is entirely up to you some people use their legs and they are runners and they make money from that. Some people use their voices. Mm. It's part of your body mm. and they make money from that. Some people use their fingers. Some people use their brains. Some people use their eyes. We are always exploiting our physical bodies in order to make a living. And I don't understand how in a capitalistic society we think sex work is less than because I am still exploiting my body for profit. Everybody does it. One way or another, all of us are prostituting some way. Whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, I don't care what you are. You are prostituting in one way or another for money. It's just called differently. Yeah. It's called different things. With that, I feel I advocated. Honest, now yeah, I'm losing my Right? I have a last question though. Yes. You have been given the opportunity to speak to South Africa through the camera and the lens. How are you then taking your gifts and your calling to speak to South Africa um, in order to change or empower? In most cases, I do content that that rings true to my calling. I hardly ever do content that is not aligned with healing, bringing awareness, helping people to delve into themselves and explore and experience and heal certain aspects of themselves. I believe that I've always been drawn to content that has to do with awakening and healing and going deeper into ourselves. So I, I stray very far from um, frivolous content and even though people might watch something and think that it's frivolous like sports wives they're probably thinking oh it's frivolous i'm like no you don't get it um watch deeper yeah 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 there are deeper issues that are being tackled within the frivolous content so that's how i do it um because i was a kalem samo i mean yonke so the way i do it is 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 just the type of content that I allow myself to be involved in. Mm. What is the psychology of sports wives that attracted you to them to actually do the show? Sports wives is about the women behind the stars. It's about what they go through. It's about them being the main stars, the, the main characters of, of, of their own lives. Because in most cases, Tatwa Labandu, who are playing soccer and playing rugby and whatever, and they are made into the focal point. And people hardly ever look at the women that wake up exceni and make their smoothies so and take their children to school. And, 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 and they, they don't, people don't consider that. Gubegwa, the person who is in the limelight, who is the sports star. And for me, it was imperative that we show these women behind um, the, the sports star. stars and so on. And like, this is this is the poor guys. Mm. Yes, I know you know about Andy Le and uh, and uh, the, her other baby daddy, but this is this woman. She, yes, she has two children with these um, soccer players, but she is a hustler. Mm. She she believes in in pushing her own brand. She has started this. I wanted to show that Uguti. There are some blombot. Okay. These women are some blombot. They, they, they are intelligent, they are knowledgeable, they, they are a force unto themselves. And that is how they help their partners who are seen on screen to, to be who they are. They are not doormats. These women are powerhouses. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was important as that, not just as a doormat. No. That's beautiful. It is. What do they say again? Behind every successful man, there's mm, what? A powerful woman. Yay! <laughs> so we're seeing powerful sport wives. We mm. are. Thank you so much for coming to our chat room. Bye, guys. Cheers. <laughs>